For the past 12 years, I've lived in southern Ecuador, in the Andes Mountains, in a rural area, and I've seen my share of aerial unexplained phenomenon, UFO activity, everything from flashing lights in the sky to zigzagging lights that were traveling at speeds way beyond of an airplane, to brilliant, brilliant sightings of very, very clearly non-human craft appearing over uh, valleys with many brilliant lights hovering in the sky for hours. We've even seen one um, sighting that over 8,000 people in this town here in Vilcabamba saw for about five hours during daylight hovering above the town. This area is rich with UFO activity, but the story I want to share with you uh, comes from one of my first encounters, and it wasn't just an encounter with a UFO sighting, but actually a alien encounter with extraterrestrial intelligence. And I'm sharing it because I guess now is the time to do this. I'm kind of holding back this story for a while, but since this is everywhere these days in the media, I wanted to share with you my experience. It started for me when I was 19, 20. I was actually living in Mexico at the time. Prior to this incident, something had occurred in my life. I had a very powerful uh, what you could call a spiritual awakening, a kundalini awakening. Uh, when I was about 19, 20, it started uh, in a satsang I attended with Eli Jackson Bear, and which is the lineage from Papaji and Ramana Maharshi. My mind basically just stopped for about a week to 10 days. I wouldn't say stop, but it, it went down to about 20, 10% of its capacity. There was just peace and stillness. Something in me woke up to the truth of what I was, pure consciousness, pure emptiness, pure bliss. And so my mind just slowed down. And also, I want to tell you that this is prior to me being involved with any kind of things like ayahuasca or San Pedro, any kind of uh, medicines like that. I hadn't even tried any substances in my life other than maybe tobacco. Uh, for a little bit when I was a teenager. So my mind was very, very clear. And this wasn't an experience that was stimulated through any kind of entheogen. It was just pure consciousness awakening to consciousness. And I was walking around this little town of Sayulita in Western uh, Mexico with my heart blasted open and just feeling my body and life in a way that I have never had before. I gained the ability to communicate with animals. I could just like taste a bird. I remember a bird landed on a branch one morning and I was just looking at it. I could taste what it ate for breakfast and just feel its story. There was so much peace, so much uh, knowing in my body, but a profound, profound recognition of what I actually was. I would look in the mirror and see my reflection and just know that this actually wasn't me. It was just spirit looking through a body and it was just delightful and funny. And this period was marked by tremendous peace, tremendous love, and a flow in my life that began to open up to beyond what I knew before. And about the fourth, fifth day of this experience, uh, which didn't last long, mind you, because um, of obviously how these things go, your, your mind comes back and then you, you learn a lot of lessons as you grow older. But about the fourth or fifth day of this experience, something very peculiar happened. I woke up and I was hovering above my body. And this didn't alarm me because prior to this, when I was about 14, 15, I had done a lot of meditation and a lot of conscious practice of astral projection with very success. I was really wanting to learn how to do astral projection. But I found myself here in the morning hovering around my body in this space of peace within my consciousness. And very soon I felt a force tugging me back away from my body as I rose higher and higher. I went through the ceiling, which is always a fun experience when you're doing astral projection, because sometimes you can actually perceive everything through that experience, including like tasting the tiles and moving through the roof. And I kept on going higher and higher above the clouds, moving very, very rapidly. And then I was outside of the earth. Sorry, if you're a flat earther, the earth isn't flat. It, it was a huge globe moving out further, further, further. And 
I was just moving, moving, being pulled by this force with this kind of curiosity, a feeling of being summoned somewhere. I found myself moving. We're probably around the distance I was at was probably halfway, a quarter to the moon, like halfway between the earth and the moon, because it, it, it felt like yeah, I could see the earth being as of that size if you look at pictures from like Apollo missions. And I was moving through another surface. This time it was a very metallic surface. Um, and then I was inside of a room and there was, you could still see the earth, but it was, it was almost like a, it wasn't like a Star Trek viewing screen. It was, it was a type of technology that would actually, that would actually, you would, it was still the, the, the wall of the craft, but you could see through it somehow. And then I kept moving back and I was, now I was slowing down way, way, way. And before me, these two heads just kind of passed by. I was moving out and there they were. And there were two beings of the way you would typically kind of expect an alien to look like the alien gray, typical um, sightings or descriptions, but they were not like that. Their sh the shape of their heads were kind of like that. Their skin was, it was almost like marble with a hint of more brown. And there were two slits for noses. They had no mouths. It was just two, no, uh, two slits for a nose, no mouths. The eyes were very large, um, kind of like the lens of my camera right now. And they weren't like all black, like reptilian eyes. They were kind of more humanoid actually, but just very big, uh, almost like the size of a cue ball from pool. And I was just there with them, looking at them both. And this was completely normal. I was just like, hey guys, <laughs> it was like a soul recognition. And what preceded then was a telepathic conversation. It was all telepathy. The nature of that conversation is the reason why I'm making this video, because it seems most pertinent on the world right now. I was being shown, first I was told that what was happening to me right now was very special, that it was real and to appreciate and to love it. But this spiritual awakening I was experiencing was uh, the first of many I would experience in my life, that there would be a deepening and that this is really important and to take notice of this and that I was uh, being met kind of by a soul tribe here right now in order to remember certain things. And that this is really important. And so I was like, yeah, cool. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, it feels great. <laughs> but then um, the messages continued. And it was a very, very rapid because um, things in telepathy can happen very, very quickly in a short amount of time. And I was just being shown picture after picture of what was about to happen on the planet. And it was just a lot of chaos, a lot of war, a lot of explosions. I saw a lot of war in the Middle East and many horrific things that would still transpire on the planet. And I was kind of like, why are you showing me this? You know, just kind of seeing all this stuff, almost like hovering over the planet and, and seeing these things and these events as if I would, as, as if a satellite would, would be seeing these things. And the message that I <clears throat> was told was that this thing that you're experiencing right now, this stillness, this peace, I'll never forget these words, they said, only stillness can save the world. That was it. And it went so deep. And I knew it as truth because they said only stillness can save the earth. This thing that you're feeling, this peace, this stillness inside, this frequency is the only thing that can make a difference. Don't mess around with actions or trying to change things because it's this frequency is that is what you're actually here to hold and to transmit on the planet and that was kind of it it was like okay thank you and transmission back through the craft back into my body and i woke up um just rose right up i was still buzzing really really excited about what had just happened I took out a notepad and, and wrote it down. I forgot most of it. There's there's much more, which I've actually forgotten. It's been, uh, gosh, almost 20 years right now ago that this happened. But that was the general message that I got, that only stillness can save the world. Only peace can change the world. Now, if you're watching this 
kind of might be like a duh moment, but as I'm contemplating it these days and realizing it in my own life, I can see the profound nature of that message and how important it is for all of us to hear. And and looking over my life, and especially over the work I do these days, I've come to realize that what I received that day on that craft or remembered was not just a message for that time, but a seed that was planted in me that would grow over a lifetime. And I'm seeing the fruit of it these days in my life. Because what I've come to realize is that peace and stillness is the only power. Peace is the only power. And every day I wake up, I make it a point, a life practice to recognize that today stillness is my only priority. Anytime in my life where I've encountered chaos, where things have not been going well, not according to plan and out of control is when I've lost sight of that simple teaching. And it's been through grace, through incredible teachers and amazing things unfolding in my life that have reminded me of this over and over again, that stillness is my only priority. And the way that looks in your life is not just like a thought, but in waking up every day, you know, you have so many different things, priorities, things that may seem important, the chaos that's appearing as a result of all these things grabbing for your attention, things not going well, you're not feeling well, the illusion that you need to change something in order to actually achieve happiness or fulfillment or to get things to work straight. And what I found is that that never ever works. It's never doing something that results in alignment in your life. It's always recognizing that the peace that you seek, the fulfillment that you seek is closer than your own breath. It's as simple as breathing in, feeling everything that you're feeling, <sighs> exhaling and just being committed to that today stillness is my only priority i will not move forward until i open just a little bit more soften just a little bit more and feel into the stillness and the peace that is already here even if outside what i'm seeing is war explosions bombs chaos things in the family not going well things with money not going well things with the business not going well with whatever it's like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing all this energy of this chaos in my body up to my attention so I can give it the love that it requires. And it may seem insignificant. It may seem like a small thing, especially massively daunting in the face of the chaos happening out there right now in the world, what we hear about, what we see. But I promise you, it is way bigger because small quantum shifts in your body are actually massive, massive shifts in a three-dimensional external reality, which we see, which we think is so real and so palpable. Small quantum shifts in your body are huge shifts in the external. And if you do this practice long enough of bringing your mind and your body to stillness, even though your life on the outside may not immediately look like this picture of stillness and wellness and abundance and flow just know that it will eventually sometimes it takes the 3d to to reflect that back to you some time to catch up but it does catch up and the truth of this teaching is that everything on the external is just mirroring your relationship with yourself on the internal and this is why peace is the ultimate true power and stillness is the only thing that can make a difference on the earth. So while we're watching the most horrific atrocities happening around us, while it may seem like everything is going to hell in a handbasket, believe me, it's not. It's just external. And more often than not, it is the last traces of the chaos inside of us that is coming to be recognized felt and loved peace is the true power but it's not here to conquer anything it just is and as we align with it as you align with it in your world as you 
come into loving acceptance with everything that is in your life right now, exactly as it is, you'll see things shifting all around you. I don't know about you, but I personally feel like right now is the time to come into our power, to actually come here to serve with the gifts that we have been incarnated with on this planet so we can actually assist the greater awakening and other people in their process. And if right now you feel this calling deep within to come into your true power, to share what you have come here to share with your voice, with your energy, if you are feeling called to assist other people, you've always wanted to help other people, but you feel blocked, you feel stuck in that process either because all your stuff is coming up, all the stuff within that's blocking you with that, your depression, your fear, your doubt, your anxiety, or you feel stuck with sharing your voice, you feel blocked, you feel cringeworthy for you to even consider putting yourself out on video like this, or you just don't know how to articulate what it is that you do, this incredible transformation that you can actually facilitate for other people into words to communicate that out into the world, then I'd love to invite you to watch the video I've linked down below. It will greatly assist you in this process. That is the essence of my life's work. If you would love to actually have some assistance in sharing your transmission, what you have come here to share with the world, the energy, the incredible gift that you are, you'll find incredible resource resources down in that video below. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time.